Okay, so this is the second uh, Bodhi plotting, Bodhi sketching video. I mentioned at the end of the previous one that I would do some examples, and so we're going to do that now. Um, for my first example, I want to consider a transfer function that is basically two first order poles multiplied together. So you've got a P1 over S plus P1 times a P2 over S plus P2, leading us to that form. Um, it generally goes smoothest when you're trying to do Bode plots if you're just trying to do examples to have them pretty widely separated in the frequency domain. So I'm going to set P1 to 1 hertz and P2 to 100 hertz. So if I were actually trying to do this numerically in Python or something, I would actually have them as radians. But when I go to plot them on a Bode plot, I'm going to always have frequency in hertz on my x-axis. So... There's our transfer function. We're saying 1 hertz and 100 hertz. And so one of the things I would do, if I was giving this on an exam or something, I would just have a blank axis. And so I'm going to come in here and label this as 1, which makes this 10, which makes this 100 hertz. Um, that would make that 1,000 hertz if we kept going that far, like so. Um, I mentioned that we have an algorithm. And that algorithm is to start at s equal to 0. And if I plug in s equal to 0, ask myself, do I get zero? Do I get infinity? If I get zero, I've got a pure differentiator. If I get infinity, I've got a pure integrator. And in this case, if I plugged in s equal to zero, um, I would get p1 times p1, p2 over p1 times p2. So g of zero would just go to one, and that corresponds to zero dB. Um, if I wanted to multiply this out and plug in numbers, just in case you're checking this on your own later, this actually works out to 3,947.84 S squared plus 634.6 S plus that same number, like so. But kind of, I'm starting at 0 dB. And I've got a pole at 1 hertz and a pole at 100 hertz is enough for me to do the sketching. So I'm going to just call this 0 dB. Again, if I were doing this on an exam or a quiz, I leave the axes blank so you can kind of adjust them to whatever you need. And we're saying that we would have a pole there. So in terms of asymptotes, we would, kind of unfortunate that I'm doing this at pen, but our asymptote would come along like so until we got to 1 hertz. Then we would start going down 20 dB per decade. So I'm going to go minus 20, minus 40, minus 60, minus 80 on my axes for those ticks. So from here to here, I would expect my asymptote to go down 20 hertz. From 10 to 100, I would expect it to go down another 100 hertz. And then I would get to my second pole at 100 hertz P2. So my slope was minus 20 dB per decade. I get, so my slope was zero. I got to P1, it goes to minus 20 dB per decade. Now I get to my next pole and the second pole subtracts another 20 dB per decade. So I would now expect the slope to go down like minus 40 dB per decade. Again, if we go back to the algorithm I mentioned in the previous video, start at low frequencies and just go up. And every time you get to a pole or a zero, make the appropriate adjustment to slope and phase. And so every first order pole subtracts 20 dB per decade. So that's how we got to here. We get to the next pole, we subtract another 20, taking us to minus 40 dB per decade. And then phase wise, I want to just define a zero here. We start at zero degrees. And then when we get to our pole, um, our asymptote would drop down to minus 90. So I'm going to label this as minus 45 in the middle. And then when we get to the next pole, our asymptote would drop down to minus 180. So every pole, and those are all degrees, it's kind of labeled, every pole subtracts 20 degrees in slope, 20 degrees per decade, and subtracts 90. 90 degrees in phase. So if I was just drawing asymptotes for my phase, they would look like so. And then if I was going to, and they would actually, at the frequency, the corner frequency, they would pass through 50% of the phase change, or minus 45 and minus 135. So if I was going to sketch this in, as I mentioned previously, there's a roughly 3 dB 
uh, point that we'd pass below each of the corners and we would just kind of fade that in a little bit like so and so that's roughly what the magnitude portion of the DB plot was I actually went and got a blue pen and you really can't tell the blue from the black so that was kind of a waste of time um, and then the phase as I mentioned also generally just is a little bit wider in its transition time and so unfortunately you can't really tell that apart I'm saying this is the asymptote man I just spelled asymptote wrong <laughs> and then this is um, rough actual phase um, similarly up here we're saying that that's the actual and this straight line with the harsh corners is the asymptote so there's our first example P two first order poles one at one hertz one at a hundred hertz we come along flat we get to one hertz we drop down to minus 20 we get to 100 hertz we drop down to minus 40 phase starts off at zero passes through minus 45 at one hertz kind of levels out for a little bit and then passes through minus 135 at 100 hertz and then heads down to a minus 180 ultimately okay let's uh, consider a second example uh, so this one has a first order zero and then also has a second order under damped term and a pure integrator. So you can just kind of see this. If this happened to be multiplied out, there would be no s to the zero term. And when I plugged in s equal to zero, I'd see that my whole denominator goes to zero. So the magnitude of this would go to infinity at s equal to zero. And we're going to use z of 2 hertz, omega n of 200 hertz, and a zeta of 0.1. So let's get ready to do that. Okay, I went and grabbed a pencil so I can try to do my asymptotes in a slightly lighter gray and the real thing in a harder pen line later. Um, we'll see how that looks any better. So again, I'm in the 2 hertz to 200 hertz range, so I'm going to hard coat or just kind of pick my axes as 1, 10, 100, 1000, 0.1. And the other thing to make sure that you see is that this is a logarithmic scale. And so the distance from 1 to 2 is greater than the distance from 9 to 10. So 2 hertz would be here, and 200 hertz would be there. So that is our two, so this is the location of our z, and this is the location of our omega n. So it's a little bit tricky to kind of choose a correct starting magnitude or whatever with the pure integrator. Um, essentially, I'm just going to start drawing it, and later if I wanted to label my y, my magnitude axis, I would just pick some omega s equal to j omega, pick some omega, evaluate the magnitude, and kind of just, so for example, say at one hertz, what should my magnitude have been, or something like that. Uh, those are the kind of details that you're probably better off just evaluating numerically in Python or MATLAB or something, and so we're just trying to get a rough idea of the shape so that we would be able to quickly double check if Python or MATLAB's bit out something that was wrong because we had some kind of typo on our input or something. So knowing that I've got my z down here at 2 hertz, I'm just going to draw that point. And my asymptote would go up from there at 20 dB per decade. So I'm going to try to draw a line parallel like so. Maybe that's a little bit of a weird straight edge to use. Sorry about that. Um, so this is minus 20 dB per decade from my peer integrator until I get to my zero. Now I was at minus 20. When I get to a zero, I'm going to increment my slope by minus 20. Well, minus 20, or by plus 20. By minus 20, plus 20 takes me to zero, so it would go flat at that point until I got out here to 200 hertz. 
And then at 200 hertz, I would start to go down at minus 40 dB per decade. I'm just going to kind of rough that in. But that is twice as steep as the first order. So this slope should be twice as steep as that slope, roughly. And then zeta equal to 0.1 is uh, fairly low, and so I'm going to have some kind of peak right here. And so those are my asymptotes in the magnitude. I would be 3 dB above, and so I'm going to come in and draw that kind of like so. And then I'm just kind of guessing a little bit. That's probably a little bit too steep for a 0.1. Um, but again, we're trying to get an approximate shape so that we would be able to quickly double check what's coming out of a computer. And so I would consider that to be a legitimate magnitude sketch. And again, if I wanted to know what this value was, for example, I could plug, it looks like it'd be a better idea, to plug in S is equal to 10J times 2 pi. Just kind of evaluate my magnitude, take the 20 times the log 10 of the absolute value of that, and just label this number. Again, as a way to also check when I typed it into my computer, did I have something wrong that caused it to be shifted up or down in magnitude? So similarly, if I have this pure integrator, so my initial slope is already negative 20 dB per decade. I'm gonna label those in pen, they're a little bit hard to read. Not sure if that's making it better or worse. I would also have had an initial phase of minus 90 degrees. And so I'm going to come along at that asymptote until I get to this point. And then my zero is going to cause my phase to shift up 90 degrees. So that would take me up to zero. And then I would stay at zero until I got to 200. And then I would drop down minus 180. So my phase asymptotes would look like so. And again, I would pass through a 50% point at my corner frequency and a 50% point at my corner frequency like so. And so if I was going to fill that in, it would look roughly like that. And so I would consider that to be a reasonable phase sketch, a reasonable magnitude sketch for this transfer function, which has those slightly crazy looking numeric values. So if you take 200 times 2 pi and square that, you get a really big number. But I think that's a pretty good sketch of the Bode plot. And if I needed more specifics, more accurate information, I would generate those using Python or MATLAB or a computer somehow, and we will do that in the next video. Thanks.